Hi guys, <clears throat> just a quick one today. Um, I'm going to go through what they call SAS hard routine. Some people have read about it. It's not top secret. It's gone on for years and years and years, way back to the Borneo and Malaya vets days. However, if I go through it, you'll see the times we're living in now with the COVID and people say, Rusty, what about this? What about that? I've done some of this stuff and the vets that pioneered it all those years ago had to say thanks to. If it can help anybody who's struggling, brilliant. So it's not all about one person. This is about years and years of experience. At the moment, hard routine, I'll come on to in a second, but you know, you're in lockdown. There's COVID. It causes problems. We get over the problems. We don't like it. We get over the problems. You move on. Some people can't do that and I feel sorry. I just hope I can help them. In the lockdown, you've got food, water, beer, football, other sports being, you know, going on. When I come on to the hard routine in a minute, you'll understand where some similarities are, but not with the aids of what we've got today. So there we go. The waltz, I gotta love this one because they'll go back to the wives, girlfriends, boyfriends, whatever, and they'll tell them what it's all about. Well, actually they've never been there. So, if I tell everybody the same story, we'll see what comes out of it. So, up for the waltz. So, actually, hard routine. What does it mean? To a lot of people, hard routine. Yeah, what does it mean? Well, in the old days, the Borneo and Malaya jungle days, the veterans of the SAS pioneered the way forward. When they're on, let's say, cross-border operations, no man's land, um, close quarters with an enemy camp somewhere, they had to organize themselves. They didn't want to be caught. They didn't want to be killed. So this didn't just come around by luck. The jungles of Malaya, Brunei, Borneo, Belize, I've been to them all on more than one occasion. <laughs> and I can go into other ones as well. So the things that were tried and tested all those years ago work. Don't fix something that isn't broken. And it's quite easy to say that, but the aim of this for the guys and girls out there, anybody who wants to um, listen and then think, we haven't got it quite so bad as we think because they didn't have luxuries when they were uh, pioneering this stuff. We have the luxuries now, which come along with everything that's happened over those years. So, can you imagine yourself in a patrol of, let's say, four men? That's what SAS used to do in the main. Okay, four-man patrol. The skills we can touch on later, not today. But to get them to the height, let me tell you what they went through. And, of course... The procedures that they tried and tested, yes, they didn't all work straight away. They were refined, but they worked in the end. And the discipline, which is sadly lacking in a lot of uh, our society, if the discipline wasn't right that went with the patrol procedures, somebody could get hurt, somebody could get killed. So, KISS.
K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, stupid. Okay? I can go with that. But at the same time, hard work, effort, yes, injuries, and in some caves, death to get it to where it was. So whilst we're in lockdown, you can smoke, you can do this, you can do that, and so on. Let me just go through what happened in the jungle environment. Okay, you might be there for 10, 14 days plus on an operation. Discipline. No smoking at all, ever. And no cooking. Hard routine means you can't cook. You can't have a brew. Drink water. Anything cold you carry on with you. No cooking. Straight away people are going, uh. Here you can cook. There's plenty of food about. In the jungle you couldn't do that. Why wouldn't you cook and smoke in the jungle in all those trees hidden away? Because the bad guys, yeah, the bad guys could smell it a million miles away. They've got nostrils that you could drive a double-decker bus up. They ain't going to miss the scent of smoke and cooking. So straight away, you can't carry any of that food because you can't eat it unless you want to eat it cold. We'll come on to that in a second. No washing and shaving. That's why you see the jungle pictures with big beards and stuff. You go in there for 10 days, 14 days. Some stay longer than that in different areas for different reasons. Once again, shaving foam. In those days, probably soap. Can be smelt by the person who never uses it. Way off. That is going to attract attention. And they'll find out where you are. So you go into an environment and you don't wash, you don't shave. Don't forget it rains a lot. So you're going to have a shower nine times out of ten every day, but you're going to be wearing uniform. Not bad. No toilet paper. You don't take toilet paper. Use leaves to go to the toilet. Sounds horrible, but that's the way it is. You don't want to draw any attention to yourselves. There's only four of you. Okay, when there could be an awful lot of bad guys around. Enemy, if you like. Rubbish. You don't leave rubbish and you don't bury it. The pigs will find it. Okay, once again, it'll draw attention that somebody's in the area that it shouldn't be. Nine out of ten take an old plastic bag of some form, something like that put the rubbish they take with them into the bag and bring it back to camp with you. Standard. You're not giving anything away. You're looking after your buddies. Never use tracks. Okay. Tracks that are already there are being used by other people. So they think, ah, oh, you're going to walk for miles. No. Some days on a jungle um, advance depending where you're going to, you might only walk a kilometre at the most. Some days you might have better, but it's tactical. Okay, you've got a job to do and you've got a mission. Bear that in mind. And people think, oh, that's not very far. Trust me, get off the tracks and get in the jungle and walk through it. You'll know what it's like. It's not easy. There's animals. There's horrible trees. Things that pull you back. And it's tactical. So you have to be careful. Avoid topographical um, topographical sorry, features. High hills, if you like. Because the enemy are sure to use them as observation points, especially if you're advancing towards them. Um, rivers, be very careful where you cross a river. 
everything is going up in here as well as trying to think out think you know it's it's difficult but this is what we signed up to do that's what the guys in the initial pioneers signed up to do and it works you bergen on your back normally obviously and your belt kit that you wear and your weapon uh, with you at all times never ever more than um, an arm's length away because if you're going to need it you'll probably need it very quickly weapon cleaning if necessary out the four-man patrol one weapon would be cleaned at a time the other three men would be there with theirs ready to go if required only clean it when necessary it's not important to keep cleaning it because you want it to shine you don't you want it there to be used so you have all this is going on simultaneously day in and day out discipline don't fall down on the discipline side and of course when you finish your weapons and uh, whatever they need to be loaded and ready to fire at any time so a loaded weapon basically just so you know is a weapon with a magazine on it full of ammunition a weapon that ready to fire is one that's already been cocked and the safety catch put on you've got one up the spout as they call it one round ready to go safety catch off bang it's gone all of this was done years ago and it's been incorporated ever since and it works nowadays it may have changed i've got no idea what goes on i'm not interested my day was my day and that's it operationally bergen weight on your back in the jungle arguably about 50 pounds then you've got your belt kit and your weapon yep soon builds up especially if you've got water on your belt kit yeah think about it <clears throat> the environment in the jungle hot and sweaty most of the time and then actually it pisses down a lot after that so there's your natural shower food and rations when you get all your rations you end up throwing most of it away because you can't take it with you you certainly can't cook therefore what do you need chocolate bars they melt in five minutes that's why you eat as many as you can in one go before you ever go out and then you take the other stuff the biscuits and other, you know stuff like that which you can eat that's why it's called hard routine not easy no cutting wow these rules really yeah they do when i say that everybody carried a parang like a machete okay you don't use it to cut tracks okay you use it as a weapon self-defense if you want maybe cut a hole in the canopy to get a helicopter in if you need to get somebody out in a medical emergency so there's all these rules and stuff this is where your discipline comes in i'm going to keep mentioning it because there's not a lot of discipline these days at all anywhere but this is fact the daily procedures when you get up in the morning you've slept in what you would carry as dry kit which is a exact what you work all day in is wet you cannot dry it out there's no point in trying what you try to do is get off at night have a try to get a decent night's sleep because you're going to be on the go in the morning then the great thing is in the morning the early hours you get up 50 to 60 minutes before first light something like that you put all your wet kit back on lovely wet socks and you get up to start the day everything is soaking wet brilliant your dry kit goes back in your bag then back into your bergen which you can hope to keep one set dry but you're always going to have one set wet get used to it so it's all part of the deal 
And that's exactly what happened. So you're up 50, 50 or 60 minutes before, and then you wait. And all you do is once you're back into your wet kit, you sit on your Bergens and wait. Everybody's got an arc, the four man patrol, north, south, east, and west, or somewhere in between that. They sit and watch that until the upcoming of first light because you don't move in the jungle at night recipe for disaster for anybody so it's a drill it's something that's instilled into you you have to do it so while you sat there waiting okay the command the commander of the patrol will come across and brief each what the day's intentions are okay so everybody knows they give them a grid reference of where they are they would know anyway but it's a confirmation and with that grid reference they give them an ERV an emergency rendezvous point if something happens you bomb burst and you get back to that ERV where you have a drill those who are left get accepted into the ERV, you account for your patrol. <clears throat> so there are bits and pieces there. This is a daily routine. This happens every day. Okay, whether you like it or not, 10 days, 14 days or whatever. Once you start off again, um, every hour you'll stop for maybe five to 10 minutes. Why? primary listening how we've been followed does any can anybody pick up any noises that it shouldn't be secondly navigational halt check your map where you are everybody confirms and then also that's classed as a rest hold that would happen about um, arguably every hour ish in the jungle difficult place to navigate trust me on that um, you can't see anything. You hope you're ending up where you're going for by using your navigational aids and skill of what's around you. Yeah, you get a breakfast thrown in there somewhere. What, another biscuit? Yeah, another biscuit. That'll do. Um, I don't know about you, but I didn't eat an awful lot in the jungle anyway. And I certainly didn't drink a lot. There's no Stella. That's the way it is. There would be no midday halt. Okay, what you'd aim to do is get to wherever you want to go by, let's say, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, 4 o'clock. The signal communicator would set up his radio. While he's doing that, a couple of the patrol would be watching him. He'd be communicating, Morse code, sending stuff out, um, important, and then waiting for anything to come back into the patrol, which they should know about. And that's how it works. You know, daily, you get into that routine and you keep going day in and day out. Once the signal has done his bit, you then disappear, probably another hour, maybe hour and 15, hour and 20 minutes, depending on the light. And what you're looking for now is a laying up position where you're going to spend the night, harbour area. Once you've got to somewhere that you think this will do, this is where we're going to spend tonight, we know where we are. You try to get close as you can together. Okay, sometimes you have to sleep on the floor. Sometimes if you were lucky and had a hammock, okay, that's extra weight. That's something that isn't needed. If you did have a hammock, you'd be looking for a vegetation type area. If you didn't have a hammock, you'd be looking for somewhere to lay on the floor with a kip sheet over the top of you. That's it. That is it. And then you look to go through the night until the next morning when it all starts again. So the morning comes, you get up, as we've said, and it all kicks off again. The closer you can get to each other, you can keep a visual on everybody which tells you it's okay. But they call it a basher area, basher. Okay. In a patrol in my day, it was four men. 
um, and you could be visual with each other and once it becomes last light that is more or less when you're thinking I could maybe get an hour or two sleep I don't know about anybody else but I think I used to sleep with one eye open I just you could hear trees crashing down but um, that's the way it is inside these rainforest jungles and stuff. Dry kit, yeah. Back on the morning. Do your feet. Your most important part of your body, in my opinion, is your feet. Soaking wet all day. Once you get into your dry kit, if you can get into your dry kit, um, foot powder, a definite dry your feet out and then the morning trust me they're good to go again trust me on that you put your wet socks back on boots back on and generally speaking they used to say you sleep sorry you don't take both boots off at the same time you have a boot on and a sock on you take the other boot and sock off powder it and then you do the other one it seems strange but actually, it worked. And to summarize a hard routine, you have to put up with a lot of hardships. But it is a procedure that was developed and worked. And because of that, you have to go back to the guys who trialed it originally. The jungle doesn't change. The guys change. The weaponry that you might be carrying for the likes of an AR-15, 16, or whatever, um, doesn't change. So there wasn't actually a lot to say we need to change it. We didn't. It is a hardship. Of course it is. But it had great success for the SAS in in enduring the Brunei, sorry, I beg your pardon, the Borneo Malaya conflicts all those years ago. It worked, and that's how it all started. Not a lot changed in my day. As I say, I've no idea what goes on now. But the secret is. When you're in the jungle on hard routine, you, I've, I have been on hard routine in other places that is not the jungle. I might come on to that one at some stage. But jungle mainly is where you have a hard routine. You're never going to put weight on, trust me on that. Never. So don't fight the jungle. Use it at your advantage. If you can do that, then straight away you're going to feel more comfortable. And the enemy, they're not going to be too happy. So I've mixed and matched that. Um, just to give you some idea. COVID, yeah. COVID, yeah. But we have to start somewhere and you still have football, other sports, you still have beer, you still have food, you still have water, you still have each other. In the jungle environment, it is actually imperative that to stay as a unit, a fighting unit, that you adhere to all the rules. Yes, sense of humour will always be there. Trust me on that one. I've got some good stories on the sense of humour. But I can't do them all in one go. So with that, I'll finish off tonight. Um, anybody who wants anything from my site, www.rusty-firmin.org forward slash shop. These... And my books down here are on it. 
and you can purchase them direct and I will sign and send them to individuals as I've been doing for quite a long time so with that I hope you enjoyed it who dares wins <laughs>